David Smith here with a flipped classroom math video lesson. Three tips before we start. First, remember you can slow down or speed up the video if that helps. Second, you can pause the video at any point to catch up with notes or jot down questions. Third, you can turn on the captions so you can read my words on the screen. Today's topic, finding line equations quickly. So we're going to show you a new shortcut for getting into the equation of a line um, and it's going to give you some new tools for that. So uh, before we start, I want to just let you know that we've covered quite a few ways to get the equation of a line. So some test problems or quiz problems that you'll see will let you just do it whichever way you want. And as long as you get it correct, you'll get all the points for that. But some questions may direct you to use a certain form. So to get the full points on that question, you're going to need to use that form, okay? So uh, don't just focus on one method, okay? Make sure you can do all of them. Okay, let's get started. So our new shortcut, here it is. If the slope is 3 fourths, we're just telling you the slope of a certain line, then the equation has to have this form, y equals 3 fourths x plus c. Now, if you look at this form, you can see that's just the slope-intercept form. Solve for y. So it, the c stands for the constant in general form. Remember, general form looks like this. ax plus by equals c. Okay. So we know in a slope-intercept form equation, there's some number out here, that constant. So this c is pretty much related to that one. So let's take a look at what we can do here. We can go straight from this with our slope into general form. We don't need anything else. It's kind of cool. So remember, general form has A is positive, and A, B, and C are all integers, no fractions. So the first thing we want to do here is just get rid of this fraction. Okay. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 4. And that will get rid of the fraction. So I get 4y over here. Now 4 times 3 fourths is just going to give us 3x. And then 4 times c is just going to give us 4c. So check it out. I no longer have any fractions. So now I just need to organize this equation so that I have, uh, I have my c on one side, and then I have my x and y on the other side, and my x is positive. So check this out. x is already positive, so I just need to move the 4y over here and the 4c over there. So I'm going to subtract 4y from each side and subtract 4c from each side. So what I'm going to get is minus 4c equals 3x minus 4y. Okay? Now, you're probably saying, well, but what's this 4c going on? General form just has a c. And so this is where what I was telling you before, this c is related but not exactly. So whatever that number is for a line equation, this number here will be four times that. But what we can do now, since this is a constant, we can just drop that. Okay? Now that might feel weird, but just think about it this way. This c was some number that in the slope-intercept form that for the general form it would be a bigger number. It would be, in this case, it would be four times that. But it's still just a constant. Okay? So in general form, this is a constant. In slope-intercept form, that's actually the intercept. So Let's rewrite that the full way we need to do it. It's 3x minus 4y equals c. So now I have my general form equation. One more interesting thing to note. Look at these integers on the x and y, and look at the slope. Slope is 3 quarters. Here's my 3 and there's my 4. Okay. So if I take a over b, that's going to be negative 3 quarters. Really closely related to slope. Okay? So here's a cool thing about general form, is you get the slope out of it. You just have to do one thing. You have to change the sign of A over B. So for general form, slope equals negative A over B. So if you have a general form equation, you can pull slope right out of that. You just take these two integers, a over b, and you change the sign. And that gives you slope. So that's one of the cool things about general form. 
Okay, so that last little bit leads us to a couple rules that we can then use to quickly find some line equations. So check this out. If our slope is just a over b, like there's no negative, this is a positive fraction, then the general form is going to be ax minus by equals the constant, equals c. Okay, so remember if the slope is positive, there's a negative between the ax and the by, and similarly, if our slope is negative, some negative there, negative fraction, then the general form equation is going to be ax plus by equals c. So now we can exploit that to come up with a general form equation for a line nice and quickly. So watch this. Here's an example. Our slope is 3 quarters, and it's going to pass through the point 5 minus 2. So now we have enough information to find our constant. And that's all we really need to find to write this line equation. So watch this. So a, a x b y, here's my slope, right? So I have a positive slope, it's 3 quarters. So my a is 3, so I have 3x, now it's positive, so it's minus b, minus, I'm sorry, minus 4y equals c, okay? So, so far so good. We know our equation is going to look like that, because I just plugged in my slope numbers. I put the minus in there because my slope is positive, okay? So now there's another plug-in that we can also do. We know it passes through this line, this point, 5, negative 2. So I can plug in my coordinates. I can go 3 times 5 minus 4 times negative 2 equals c. And now I have just numbers on this side, so I can solve this equation for c. 3 times 5, got 15 there. Minus 4 times negative 2 is going to be positive 8, so 15 plus 8 equals c, so c equals 23. Pretty cool, so watch this. Now that I know my c, I can just plug in. I'm going to go back to this step and go 3x minus 4y equals 23. So bam, I got my line equation. Just using my rules for slope and the general form equation, I just plugged in my slope and my point, I solved for c, I found my constant, and then I just wrote my line equation. Okay, here's one for you to try. So here's your setup. Your slope is negative 3 quarters, and this line passes through the point 1, 7. So pause the video, use what you just learned on the last two boards, and give me the general form equation for this line. Okay, let's see how you did. First thing to notice, our slope is negative. So our form is going to be ax plus by equals c. So now we know what form we're going to use. Now we can plug in our slope numbers. We're going to get 3x plus 4y equals c. Getting closer. So now we plug in our point, our x and y coordinates for the point. So we get 3 times 1 plus 4 times 7 equals c. So now we can figure out what c is, because we just got numbers on one side in our c over here. So 3 times 1 is 3, plus 4 times 7, that's 28, plus 3 gives me 31 equals c. And now I just plug my c in to this part of our process there, and I write 3x plus 4y equals 31. There's our line equation. Okay, one more for you to practice, and really I urge you, pause the video and write the equation, find and write the equation for this line. Slope two-thirds passes through the point negative two, five. Okay, let's see how you did. My slope is positive, so my form is going to be ax minus by equals c. First step. Second step, plug my slope numbers into this form. 2x minus 3y equals c. Bam. Third step, plug the points in for x and y. So I get 2 times minus 2 minus 3 times 5 equals c. Let's evaluate. 2 times minus 2 is negative 4. Minus 3 times 5 is negative 15 equals c. This gives us 4 minus 15 is going to be negative 19. So that's our c. So now we go back to this step and plug it in, and we're going to get 2x minus 3y 
equals negative 19. Bam! Okay, let's do a bonus problem. This is a type of problem that you might see on one of my tests as a challenge problem. It's also going to pull together a bunch of things that we've been learning in coordinate geometry and finally introduce you to the concept of a tangent line. So here's the problem. We have a circle. We call it circle C. That's the point in the center of our circle. And you've got the coordinates of that point, 2, 3. Now this line, line L, is tangent to the circle. And the point of tangent C, as we call it, is negative 1, 5. And what tangent lines do is they just kiss the circle at one point. They don't go through it, and they don't miss it. They just touch the circle right at one point. And so that's basically a tangent line. Now, one of the things we know about tangent lines is they, um, they occur at right angles to a radius of the circle that goes from the center to the point of tangency. So we know that that's a 90-degree angle. Okay? And I'm a big fan. Mark your information using the notation on your diagram. It helps your brain think and solve this problem. Now, if you're feeling like it, pause the video right now and see if you can do this. What you want to do is find the equation for line L. Okay, let's work through this. First, we need to find this slope, okay? Because this line is perpendicular to the line whose equation we want. So if we find this slope, we're going to see that uh, we're going to be able to take the negative reciprocal of this slope, and that will give us the slope of line L, which we then can use to find the equation for L. So let's do that. The slope of CP, the radius of the circle that's perpendicular to line L, is going to be like this. M equals Y2, 5, minus Y1, 3, over X2, minus 1, minus X1, which is 2. So this is going to give us... 2 over negative 3. So this slope is negative 2 thirds. Now we need to take the negative reciprocal of that to find the slope of line L. So the negative reciprocal is just going to be positive 3 over 2. Okay, so now we have a slope and we have a point. Point P is on line L. Can't use point C, that's not on L, but P is. So now we need to figure out which form of the general equation we can use. Our slope is positive, so that means we're using ax minus by equals c. Boom. Next step, plug in your slope numbers. So we have 3x minus 2y equals c. Now we plug in our coordinate point, minus 1, 5. So it's going to be 3 times negative 1 minus 2 times 5 equals c. This is negative 3 minus 10, which gives us negative 13 equals c. Last step, plug our c into this part of our equation. So we get 3x minus 2y equals negative 13. Bam! Now that you've watched the video, take a quick moment to jot down additional notes, questions for class, or a quick summary of the lesson. You can also re-watch portions of the video that were a little tough for you the first time around. If you enjoyed the video, please click like, and if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.